So tell us a little bit about yourself, Freddie. Well, I was born on August 26, 1974, and the way the story goes is my dad, who's Freddie Scott as well, he was playing with the Baltimore Colts at the time and actually scored his first touchdown on the day I was born. So I was almost not called Freddie. Uh, my dad tried to get me called TD instead of Freddie, but my mom wasn't going for that. And, um, and I was ended up being raised in a football family. My dad played 11 years in the NFL and was raised in uh, Baltimore and Detroit and LA. He played in, even in the USFL. And, um, that lifestyle ultimately led me to not even be able to finish school at the same school until I was in the eighth grade. I'd always, I'd always start in one school and then have to finish the school year someplace else. So I was always moving around, always having to find new friends, always uh, the new kid, but I was always, always popular because kids always wanted to be able to get football tickets or get an autograph or things of that nature. And uh, ultimately, uh, Developed my own football career. I uh, went to high school at Country Day in, uh, right in Birmingham, Michigan, right outside of Detroit. Uh, All-American there and got recruited and ended up at Penn State where I was a starter on an undefeated team there in 94 with the likes of Kerry Collins and Kijana Carter and Bobby Ingram and what I say is still one of the best college football teams ever. And uh, we had a great time winning the Rose Bowl during that tenure there. And ended up having an opportunity to play in the NFL for four years until I tore my hamstring. And uh, we played with the Atlanta Falcons, Indianapolis Colts in 98 with Peyton Manning, and in 1999 with the Detroit Lions, the year Barry Sanders retired. So I have a lot of good stories, a lot of good people I've met. And what inspired you to write The Dad I Wish I Had? Well, I was literally in service at our church here uh, in Nashville, a church called Word of Faith Christian Center. And I was in a service on a Wednesday night, and I just heard the Lord speak to me and tell me, write a book entitled The Dad I Wish I Had. That's all I heard, but I knew exactly what that meant, because even though I had a great opportunity being raised in an NFL family and going to NFL games, uh, life was not always picture perfect. In fact, uh, many times I'd go to school wishing I was in someone else's family or wishing that somebody else's dad was my dad or wishing you know, that I didn't have to go home to some of the things that were going on within our relationship. And like everybody else, sometimes you feel like the grass is greener somewhere else. And so the book just addresses uh, things that go on in your heart that typically no one really knows about, that typically you can't even really tell your best friends about and how God was able to heal me through that process in spite of things not being perfect at home how you can still walk in the perfect will of God for your life and you were actually able to get coach Tony Dungy to write the forward is that right yeah in fact it's amazing that that happened when I started writing the manuscript uh, like I said, I went to Penn State, and one of my coaches there at Penn State is a gentleman named Jim Caldwell, who at the time I was writing the manuscript was the assistant head coach to Coach Dungy. And so I just called him just to let him know, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, you know, I'm just writing a book entitled The Dad I Wish I Had. Do you have any thoughts? And while we're on the phone, Coach Dungy walks in the office. And so he says, hey, Freddie, Coach Dungy just came in the office. I got to call you back. So he, we hang up. He calls me back within a couple minutes. And he says, well, have you heard of Coach Dungy's organization called All Pro Dad? I said, no, I haven't. Well, there's this great organization that Coach Dungy is strongly involved with to empower fathers and dads to be dads and be more active in the lives of their children in their homes. So I talked to uh, the coordinator there, his representative, and he calls me and says, Hey, Freddie, thank you so much for calling. In fact, we have an event next week in Indianapolis. And I'd love for you to be my guest. And you can meet Coach Dungy. And in fact, we're going to have a prayer in his office praying for fathers across America. So literally, within seven days, I'm in Indianapolis in Coach Dungy's office praying with him. And he is an awesome man of integrity and character. And he was gracious enough 
to be able to afford me uh, writing the forward for the book. I was able to get him a copy of the manuscript. And literally, uh, I waited the entire season. This was June of 2008. And ultimately what ended up happening is the, when they lost their wild card game on a Saturday, he wrote the forward on Sunday. And I got it first thing Monday morning. And the rest is history. Now, of course, you know that uh, the fame of the book has spread uh, just right across the world now. What message would you have for somebody uh, who might be watching anywhere in the world right now this video? First, I want to let, let you know that no matter what you've gone through in life, what the dynamics of your family were, whether or not your dad was home, was he, whether or not he wasn't home, whether or not you got the things emotionally, physically, uh, financially from your father or not. The thing that God revealed to me is the fact that no matter where a person is or what pain somebody may have experienced, God is mindful of all of it. In fact, he is so mindful of it that when he sent Jesus to the earth, the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that when Jesus announces his ministry, he says that God sent me to heal the brokenhearted. And what that means to me is it doesn't matter what I may have gone through in my personal life or what may have happened within the four walls of my house. God is so mindful of it that he does not want me to carry the weight or the pain of that one moment longer. And so hopefully people will be able to get hope and healing and be able to live their life totally free from anything that may have happened in their past.